Welcome to On the Town, brought to you by the Vegas Voice. My name is Evan Davis, and I'm the entertainment editor for the Vegas Voice. We are here at the Humana Neighborhood Center on West Charleston for our celebrity spotlight interview. I'll be here every second Wednesday of the month, taping in front of a live audience. Also, the Vegas Voice columnist, columnist Rich Natoli will be hosting On the Town the third Tuesday of the month at the Humana Neighborhood Center in Green Valley. My guest today is Sonny Charles and actress, singer, Grammy nominee, Pia Zadora. And we'll be back to talk to them in a minute. Quality of life, it's important to all of us who live here in Las Vegas. But for those of us who are over 65, that quality of life can sometimes be hampered by the presence of heart problems, blood sugar issues, or breathing difficulties. If you're Medicare eligible and have been recently diagnosed with diabetes, chronic heart failure, cardiovascular disease, or a chronic lung disorder, Humana may have a health plan for you. Find out how a Humana Gold Plus plan could provide you with all the benefits of a Medicare Advantage plan, plus additional resources for your specific health needs, including our growing network of physicians that are committed to delivering the highest quality of care to all of our members, and convenient locations near you, which feature the latest in healthcare technology and a patient-centered comprehensive care model designed to help manage our members' health. Call to speak to a licensed Humana sales agent or visit a Humana Guidance Center today to learn about our plans or stop by one of our clinics. Welcome back to On the Town. Again, we're at the Humana Guidance Center on West Charleston with Sonny Charles and Pia Zadora. We're going to be talking to them today about everything and anything, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. We're going to enjoy ourselves up here. And uh, let's get started with uh, let's get started with Pia. We uh, we know that uh, you're a, a an actress, a singer, a Grammy uh, nominee. Uh, who beat you out? Uh, Tina <laughs> Turner. Oh, oh, Tina Turner. Beat in fact, Sunny and I both have a story about Tina Turner. She won my Grammy. Uh -huh. That's the first time I ever said that. She won my Grammy. How dare she? In 85, I was nominated for Best Female Rock Singer. I was doing rock and roll at the time and pop music. And, um, and Sonny, tell your story. Well, I, I had recorded Black Pearl, which was my hit. My second song was going to be a remake of Proud Mary, another Creedence Clearwater song. And so Phil Spector, cat that he is, gave the song to uh, Tina Turner. So she had the big, big, big hit on Proud Mary. She mentions it in her book that she took the song from uh, from my group, the Checkmates, and, uh, you know, small compensation though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why don't we talk a little about what you guys are doing right now, and then we'll go work our way back. Uh, I know I see you guys almost every weekend. It's like, like hanging out at a place called Piero's. Yes. Piero's uh, Italian. And we, I have the room, which is called Kids Place, it's Cabaret River. It's my fourth year there, and uh, Sunny is my co-star there, Sunny Charles. And we just hang out, and we sing, and we banter, and we have fun every weekend. We have an amazing band, Jolano, who is with Frank and Ella and Lena, and uh, the Jolano Trio. And that's what we do, great food, great music, a lot of fun. Why do I sound like an aunt? <laughs> <laughs> Pia, Pia invited me to be, uh, she invited me for one weekend to be her guest. And uh, that was in like, November. I, and I always joked, I'm like a house pest. I won't go away, you know. I've been there ever since, you know. Yeah, he's we just have such a great time. Pia's a wonderful hostess. Uh, she, she's very generous with, with, with the stage time. She lets me do what, what I do. And we get together and clown around a little bit afterwards, you know, and uh, just a ton of fun. So I'm not leaving. Yeah. So okay. okay. And she shows a lot of a lot of video clips of some of her movies yes. and some of the things. One of the the thing I really like is uh, uh, is an intro that Frank Sinatra uh, gave to her. I think it was something like this. Uh, he invited her to open for him. I forgot where it was. She goes out there little thing as she is, goes out there and she uh, does her opening belt some songs out, however long she's there. She comes off stage and, uh, and, and 
Frank is, is there and he says, uh, I told you to warm up the crowd, not burn the house down. <laughs> so I remember that quote and uh, that's just a, yeah. a wonderful uh, attribute to accolade. Frank Sinatra. You know, we, we that's have another a, thing we have in common. Yes, we have a thing. Uh, my band opened for Frank Sinatra uh, on two occasions. The one thing about Sinatra, this is a unique to him, I think. He was, uh, we were at the Oakland Coliseum and he was rehearsing, going out of my head day and night, night and day, and it's a 38 piece band just rocking like this. He was singing without a microphone and you could hear every word. The band was below him. And that shows respect. Because I was working with four guys and I had to have a microphone. <laughs> but you heard every word. You heard every great. word, and, and I mean... Yeah. Nowadays, when you hear music, you can barely make out the words, but come down to Peter's place and you can hear every word. Oh, yeah. Probably twice. Uh, it's really a, it's a lot of fun down there. Well, that's one thing Sinatra teaches you to enunciate, to tell a story, to talk to the audience. Yes. And that's... The songs are, you have to be conversational when you're singing. Mm -hmm. And Sonny, you're, uh, you're doing something in a couple of weeks out of town. I'm, I'm going to Bentonville College in North Carolina. I'm going to do a, uh, a Philharmonic show with Sonny Turner and, of uh, the Platters. And uh, we're going to do that uh, Saturday night to 22nd. And uh, I'll be right back. I'll miss being in Pierre Rose, though. We will miss you. Yes. Evan's going to fill in for you. I'm He's taking singing lessons. Oh, good. 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 But if I don't make it, Ronnie Rose will be there. All right. All right. Good. Good. Pete, why don't you tell us uh, about your uh, your career, how we got started, and where, where you went from there? Well, I started when I was really young. I was, I was seven years old, and I was going to a parochial school, and the nuns felt that I was, I was very shy. They thought there was something wrong with me. So... My mother sent me to a dramatic school to bring me out of my shell. And I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And I took children's courses. And Burgess Meredith, director, was looking for a little girl to co-star in a Broadway show. And I went and auditioned, and I got part. And after that, I never stopped working. I was a child actress. I was the youngest daughter in Fiddler on the Roof for two years. I was in The Sound of Music, Promises, Promises, uh, Applause worked my whole childhood. Then I started doing movies, and I won a Golden Globe for Butterfly. Then I did a couple of other movies that were mm, not that great. One of them is being re-released on Blu-ray next month, Lonely Lady, which was Harold Robbins' film. And um, I think it wasn't, it escaped, it wasn't being re-released. But so I made some poor choices at that time, but then started singing again and toured with Jimmy Jackson. We had number one hit record in Europe. And I had my own records in France, number one records. And then I picked up with Sinatra and started doing those things. And I did another Broadway show in 95. I started Crazy for You on Broadway and then I stopped working. I have a child who's going to be 20 in tomorrow. Maybe 20 years old oh, tomorrow. Wow. And he had some special issues that I had to deal with, so I stopped working. I also had two younger kids at the time. So uh, now I'm back. It's good to have you back, really. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm and going great, I might add. Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's like a, a rejuvenation of, uh, of, uh, of a career that you really thought you were just going to fool around with, I think, when you went back to uh, Yeah, I Sierra. missed it. I missed it. And I love it. And like Sunny, we both love what we're doing. And that's important because if you love what you're doing, the audience is going to enjoy it. That's right? true. So people get up there and it looks like it's work. It's hard for them and they're nervous. And, they, and the audience gets nervous. I know I do when I go see someone yeah. that's trying and very serious about what they do. We were serious about what we do. Yeah. We work hard at it. We rehearse. We do all that. But then we get up there and we have fun with it. But see, the whole deal is you do your work before you perform. Mm -hmm. When you perform, the whole key word is that you play music. I'm going to play a song for you. And you play. You don't work a song, you play a song. That's right. That's, that's the way I, I, I approach it. And, you know, 
And if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. You know, you just laugh and you keep it's going. Human. I do it all the time. I, mean, no, I, 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 I do just it all. Just that one song, you need to learn the lyrics. Or what is my life? There are certain songs <laughs> that when you get to a certain point, your mind goes, okay, you're going to screw it up. And you do screw it up every time. Yeah, second. when you overthink it, that's when you screw it up. I know, it. yeah. But you, you really do a good job at But I just, I just, you think those I laugh over pretty good. And, and make up something in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> just get through it, yeah. You I, know, when I was had to tell a story apropos of that, when I auditioned for Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway, they needed a ballad. They wanted me to sing a ballad. And I wasn't used to singing ballads, so I learned a ballad the night before. Um, it was called I Believe. A lot of lyrics, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows, and he goes, oh, I believe, I believe, I So I got up there, and I thought, you know, I was so smart, my mother brushed my hair, and I'm all ready to sing, and I believe for every, and I just made up the whole freaking song, every lyric, and after the audition, Jerry Robbins, Zero us Delaware there is like, you know what? Hire that girl because if she could fake that song, <laughs> she could do anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, you just have to that, go with it. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Sonny, tell us uh, how you got <coughs> started in the business. Uh, Man, I tell you, I, I was the shyest kid. It's funny how, how shy people uh, excel in children. I was the shyest kid. I mean, I was just really just all locked up into myself. A buddy of mine was doing a show at the rec center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He said, come stand on stage with me just for moral support. So I said, okay, and he got up, he was gonna do that lucky old song, up in the morning, out on a job, work like the devil from us. So he got up there and he went, up in the morning, and he froze. <laughs> so he turned around and looked at me and I went, out on a job, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> and I finished the whole song, got a great applause. Next thing you know, I ran back, grabbed the broom and came out doing, Maybelline, why can't you be in church? <laughs> I got a record contract that night. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a local record company, but but from that point on, I've been in the, I've been in the business. How did you uh, how did you get involved with the checkmates? Well, I started the group uh, uh, myself and, and uh, the guy who ended up being a, our band leader for ages, Bobby Stevens. Uh, we were on a football team together, and we were singing doo wop songs, Frankie Lyman and the Teenager songs, you know. Uh, we would do all the doo-wop stuff, and so we said, let's just put a group together. And so he knew a couple of guys, I knew a couple of guys, and we started a group called the uh, Fort Wayne Continentals. Ooh. And uh, ended up seven of us. You know, we ended up, we were one of the first interracial groups. Because, you know, we knew, uh, we were doing a thing for the Chamber of Commerce, just four of us singing, and there was a kid, uh, Harvey Trees, but he goes, man, I can play guitar with you, I know that song. So uh, he said, I'm a bass player, Would you, let's put something together. And so we, we had a drummer, bass, guitar, and four singers. And we toured all around the tri-state area of Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana in high school. Wow. I remember coming home and saying, Dad, I made $5. I said, I'm in show business now. <laughs> <laughs> See, we both started as kids. Yeah, we started as kids, yeah. I remember yeah. when I was eight years old, my mother was pushy. She was like Mama Rose and Gypsy. Yeah. And I was on the unemployment line. I was eight years old. Wow. And she pushed me ahead of all these people. Yeah. And they're all looking at me with daggers. And she's like, oh, she's going to be late to school. Oh, my God. I can't even believe the balls she had. Oh. Well, why don't, we, why don't we take a little break, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk a little more about uh, just about you guys. What's going on? Some relationships you stick with. Over time, they get even better. That's why more people stick with Humana Medicare Advantage. We work together with you to find the best plan, however your needs might change. Because great things are ahead of you when your health is ready for them. Humana Medicare Advantage, the plan people stick with. And we're back here at the Humana Neighborhood Center on West Charleston. We're here with Sonny Charles and Pia Zadora, just having a, a fun time talking about their lives and their, and their history of entertainment. I'm going to get back to hearing uh, wherever we left off. Yeah, we both started as kids, and we both started, it was a fluke. It was a yeah. fluke for you, yeah. and it was a fluke for me. And it's weird, because it became our lives. It and sure did. It. Yeah, it sure did. Well, 
I tell people now that at this point in my career, I don't really have to sing. Uh, financially, I don't have to sing, but emotionally, I have to sing because I still have it inside me. That's right. You know, I have to do it, you know. And so. Uh, and that we were both shy. Yes. And I mean, we are the last thing that people would call shy. And you know, I don't know what happened to that because I'm not shy at all. <laughs> Just all of a sudden, I'm the, somebody flipped the switch. Well, now I'm, they can't shut me up. <laughs> yeah, me too, but I do get shy sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes that comes back to haunt me. And I don't like that. I get very frustrated. Yeah. But I think that being on the stage gave us the outlet. You know, the audience, the feedback. Uh -huh. And also, it's easier, the one-on-one -on -one is hard. But when there's an audience, yeah. you're kind of in control. So that's easier for a shy person. The hardest people for me to perform for is my family. For some reason, because you know, you look at it, you see nothing. It's like eight or nine critics looking at me. You know, and they know you. Yeah, they know me. So, but so, Evan, how did you get into this? How did I get into this? <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah. turn it around on me. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone always says, "So tell me about you." I said, "Yeah, we'll get a letter for you about." I know you started off with a shy guy. Yeah, were you shy? You started always, really young. You were really thought, young. I always thought I was shy. Uh, you know, but people say that I'm really not. But I, uh, uh, you know, since I've been here in Vegas for about nine years, and sort of developed into the role I'm at now. Uh, it was just a snowball effect. Uh, retired, became became involved in the entertainment and helping promote uh, entertainers. Then got got recruited by the Vegas Voice, turned them down a couple of times, and uh, then they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And so. Uh, so I started producing their shows and getting involved in all the entertainment and entertainers in town and got to meet some wonderful people who became good friends as well as, uh, as, well as you know, just people I helped promote. And, uh, and I, I just love what I do. It's just so much fun being involved. I love being on stage. I love having a microphone in my hand. Uh, and you're so good at it. I, I, thank you. You know, and it's kind of like you were a late bloomer, but the same thing happened here. You found this niche, and you got out there, and yeah. you weren't shining. Yeah. And I love coming to your place. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, well, uh, let's see what we're gonna do tonight. Let's go to Kia's place. You know, and, that's, <laughs> and that's what. It's and like that's a party every weekend. We yeah. have a party. Yeah. 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 Uh, tell me a little more about uh, about your uh, singing career with the Checkmates and where you went. Uh, the Checkmates, we we did. Uh, we did Ed Sullivan's, like I said, the Ed Sullivan, all of those great shows back in the late 60s, the, the variety shows that, you know, we did all of those. Mike Douglas, Mike Griffin, Douglas, Griffin, Griffin, Carson, Carson, Ed Sullivan, we all did the same folks. Yeah, yeah, did the same yeah. thing. Got a chance to open for uh, uh, Frank Sinatra and uh, toured with Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Wow. Nice. And uh, one of the unique stories there, we got to Brigham Young University. And they would not l allow our band to play because we were an integrated band. And this was back in 1969. It caused a great big thing that made national news and everything. And they finally uh, issued uh, an, an apology, but they still wouldn't let us play. <laughs> wow. But uh, so we toured with Herb Alpert, uh, toured with uh, Bill Cosby, who was, I don't know if he was doing his bad stuff then, but back in those days, he was, he was a good friend of ours, you know. and. Uh, so uh, he's having some O'Reilly problems, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that's working out for him. But anyway, yeah, you know, it was back in that day where you could be an opening act. You did very well financially as an opening act, and uh, you got a chance to do all of the great venues and stuff. It was a wonderful time. Yeah, you traveled uh, how many countries? Oh, everywhere. I've been everywhere. Yeah, everywhere except, now I can't say I haven't been to the Middle East because I just got back from Dubai and, uh, and Jordan. And uh, so I've been to the Middle East, uh, been to the Orient, haven't done South America. Haven't done that yet. All right. But hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll get Well, you know, I'd never say never. Yeah. You know, it might happen. That's the beauty. Yeah. You never say never. Yeah. Uh, folks, again, we're here at Humana's Neighborhood Center on West Charleston. Uh, in next week on the 18th, uh, uh, I think Marty Allen will be will be there at that uh, guidance center, Humana's guidance center there. 
and it'll start at about 11 o'clock in the morning over there. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourself today. I hope uh, it's been a little educational and a little entertaining. And uh, again, to make sure that everyone knows we have a live audience, you feel free to give yourselves a hand. We're coming back uh, in the, the second week of May. We'll be here again, and we'll have another surprise celebrity guest for you. <clears throat> Until then, I want to thank Sonny Charles and Piazdora for being my, my guest on my first show. Thank you, Evan. Thank You're you. quite welcome. Thank you. And, and we'll thank you, folks. Thank you.